right there. Yes, I'm talking about you. Yes, I am. Hi guys, I'm Penny Art, and today I'm going to talk about medical marijuana and pets. Made some mistakes in the past, but something that is cannot change. I try to do the best that I can to wish it all away, but I would do it all again. Have you been thinking about giving your pet medical marijuana? Well, you'll want to stay tuned because that's what we're talking about today. Medical marijuana may be the healthcare success story of our lifetimes. The more people are starting to find that out, the more they're thinking about giving it to their pets. So I wanted to do my research and share it with you. A lot of the information online is anecdotal at best. There's not a whole lot of research. So the claim was that there is no research really backing you know, the safety or effectiveness of CBD and or THC and other cannabidioids uh, for dogs and cats. Once again, uh, not completely valid. Surprisingly, there's a pile of research out there. You know, I, I just can go on and Google it now. And I, you know, this is from the Veterinary Practice News for Intractable Epilepsy. So I tried to do my due diligence and really went searching for the information that's out there. For a lot of years, I was pretty sick and often in a wheelchair. And my pediatric doctor recommended that I get a service dog. I have two pets now. Annie, the Doberman Pinscher, and Gus Gus, the Chihuahua. That's them right here. <laughs> but before I had them, I had my service dog, Maggie. I've had great pets before, but the bond that you grow with the service animal, it's hard to explain. It's very strong. She was absolutely everywhere with me. In hospitals, she went to college with me. She went through just about everything with me. And a few years back, she started limping, and I took her to the vet, and unfortunately, she was diagnosed with bone cancer, and they told me then that she probably had less than three months to live. The positive, if there is any, that came out of knowing when my service dog was going to pass away was that I was able to give her a great send-off. I made her a big doggy bucket list. Uh, this is some of the things that we did that I'll have listed here. It, her last couple months were great, but her last couple weeks were really painful. And if medical marijuana had been in my life at that point, I absolutely would have used it with her. Any suffering that I could have eased with her, I would have tried it. I have to say, in the research that I've done on medical marijuana and pets, there's a lot of mixed messages out there. There are some videos out there that absolutely say, you give your dog marijuana, they're going to die. But there's a lot more videos out there, more recent videos, where vets have been doing research on their own and listening to their patients, like this guy. And um, as a veterinarian who's been practicing in Colorado for the last 32 years, um, for about the last 10 years of my practice, we've had legal medical marijuana in Colorado. And that's given me an opportunity to observe the benefits of that to the animals as my clients would come in to me and say, you know, I gave my dog a little bit of my stash. He was having trouble getting around. Although it's not legal veterinarian to prescribe, to prescribe these things, it certainly was fine for me to listen to. And from doing that, I gained a lot of experience myself as far as what works, what doesn't work. And there have been problems with dogs that have been accidentally eating. My point being, once again, is there is a substantial body of research. Um, are there perhaps the level of studies that we'd like to see? Hmm. Probably not. And from what I know and from what I hear from pet owners, that one of the most common applications for CBDs has to do with anxiety, has to do with behavior, these hyper dogs, these dogs that look like they've had too much um, espresso. Sure, you know? sure. And um, that seems to work very well, and it works at much lower dosages. And um, we're also looking at its benefit for pain, and there's a good deal of evidence that supports that CBDs really do help with pain, and they help with pain through mechanisms that are different narcotics. Mm -hmm. So you can use them together. together. And 
different than NSAIDs. So you can use all three of those combined to help with pain management, so nice. which is really helpful. And yeah. there doesn't appear to be any interference in terms of Wonderful. drug interactions with that. So cancer pain, um, I had one client whose dog had osteosarcoma, a big swelling of the bone, very painful, and he said like after two days of giving them something, the dog started putting weight That's on wonderful. again. But another application appears to actually cause tumors, Not maybe not all tumors, we don't know enough about its full range of applications, but it seems to shrink tumors. Because a couple weeks later he called me and says, am I imagining it? Or is this lump getting smaller? Wow. I know. Wow. That's it's profound. Really yes. And, but what we find, though, is that just like it seems with many Chinese herbs that we're also using for cancer, mm -hmm. that it works well, you discontinue it, cancer. Problem. Sure. So far, they've found out that medical marijuana does seem to help dogs with certain ailments. For people that use narcotics for pain management, like Percocet, Oxycontin, Vicodin, these are a class of drugs known as opioids, and they work by binding to opioid receptor cells in your brain and spinal cord. That's a totally different system than cannabis. Cannabis uses your endocannabinoid system, and it turns out dogs have pretty much the same endocannabinoid system as people do. Therefore, the effects of cannabis are very similar to the effects that it has on humans. What we know about CBDs and cannabinoids, which is the name for the molecules that are found in cannabis, both marijuana and hemp, is that they have a, a strong affinity for the brain and for nervous tissue, and they cross the blood-brain barrier really easily. So we see many applications in that regards. Anxiety is one. Um, there's evidence that it can be helpful with certain kinds of epilepsy, although it may not work as a standalone to treat epilepsy. Closed head trauma. Even emotional things like post-traumatic stress we're mm -hmm. seeing in humans as, sure. um, as far as applications there. One question you may have is, can dogs get high? And the answer is, yes, they can get high, and in a few different ways. They can ingest the marijuana leaves or the buds, the plant material, directly. They may ingest foods that have been laced with cannabis, such as cookies, brownies, anything that has cannabis oil or butter in it. And then recently, there have been problems with dogs that have been accidentally eating edibles off tabletops, which have very, very strong dosages of THC. And many people don't know that dogs are much more sensitive to the, to the adverse effects of THC than people are. And you may not catch them smoking a joint, but they can get high from ingesting secondhand marijuana smoke. Like this idiot's doing. Let's have a little smoke out. Caterpillar. Saw his little buddy. The white caterpillar. And said, hey man, let's have a little smoke out. And I'm like, alright. I had about a jillion friends. Oh dude, this is awesome. Oh, dude, that last one seems to be a favorite of a lot of people on the internet, like these people. Sometimes it's not an accident. This knucklehead blows pot smoke directly into a pooch's face. My boy faked this shit, you already know. Yeah. God damn, son. By blowing this much smoke in an animal's face, you're more likely to suffocate it than get it high. Don't do this to your dog, guys. Obviously, this dog is not enjoying having smoke blown in his face. Let's talk about those points separately. 
if your dog eats the actual cannabis plant, is it going to hurt them? Let's see what a vet had to say. Look at hemp. Mm -hmm. Hemp is different than cannabis in that it has very, very low levels of THC mm -hmm. and high levels of CBDs. Mm -hmm. And we know that there's actually more medicinal applications for CBDs than there are for THC. Personally, for me, I know CBD helps me to sleep, but it doesn't help all that much with my pain. For me, THC works best. But is THC okay to give to your dogs? I picked up a syringe, which is a 1cc syringe of THC. Um, in part, I was using that because it's much better for pain than just CBD. According to the Pet Poison Hotline, they say the chances of your dog dying from an overdose of marijuana is moderate to severe. But other vets disagree. There are virtually zero cases of you know, serious toxicities in dogs and cats as a result of the consumption of THC. The so-called minimum lethal dose for THC uh, is said to be 3,000 milligrams per kilo. Uh, so if we take a small dog, a small 10-pound dog, they weigh about 5 kilos. So we're looking at 15,000 milligrams of THC. So in terms of the amount that's toxic, they're saying 15,000 milligrams for a 10-pound dog. Factually, could THC be toxic? Yes, it could. Is it anywhere close to being toxic in the levels that's being dispensed and available to you and or I? No, it's not. Incredibly safe. I want to be clear. From what I've seen, if your dog eats too much marijuana, it could die. But the chance of it actually getting into enough to hurt it Seems pretty slim. Plus, we found that dogs are extremely sensitive to THC, mm -hmm. so much more so than any other species we've studied. And they can have, um, there's a number of ER admissions for dogs that have accidentally gotten into edibles yes. and things like that. So I think going the hemp route at this point in time is really a better way to go. It's safe. With proper care and dosage, it seems that medical marijuana can be good for your pets especially if they're suffering from a terminal illness, such as cancer, for pain management and stuff like that. But your pet can also have some negative side effects that they're not going to enjoy. Just like people, not all animals like to get intoxicated. Here's a few clips of some pets that got into medical marijuana on accident, hopefully on accident. They don't seem to be enjoying what's happening. This guy is high as a kite after getting his paws on some marijuana. Same with this fella. Angel, come here. Come here. He has difficulty walking straight after wolfing down a marijuana chocolate bar. <laughs> Videos like these posted on YouTube show what happens when dogs accidentally Charlie, eat food get into? laced with pot. What did you get into? Was it a cookie? Was it a special cookie? And scenarios like these are happening more and more. Nobody knows that better than Sam Smeltzer and his 10-year-old pup, Rasco, who ate some of Sam's medical marijuana-infused coconut oil that had dripped on the floor. And suddenly I hear licking and look down and I was like, oh no, <laughs> no, Rasco, no. After about an hour, Rasco was stoned and stumbling around. He's, you know, wibbling back and forth and looking at us and his eyes are all glazed. <laughs> oh, let's not drown. Oh. Oh. She's like me the other night. You want, is the monster bigger than you, Juno? Are you drowning? Oh. Great job. Great job. There's a good chance they ate way too much. They're not going to look at the, the, the plate of brownies and say, oh, let me see, I, I think I should only have just one. Uh, they're all gone. So, And that's the problem, is that they don't know when to stay enough. <laughs> Too much marijuana can cause your dog to become paranoid, lethargic, and just overall not feel good. Too much marijuana can cause your dog to have a low heart rate, a low respiratory rate, have severe paranoia, even go into a coma or have seizures. So be careful with what you're medicating your dog. So you've done all the research and you're considering giving your pet medical marijuana. Can you go to the vet and have them write a prescription? And for a veterinarian, you know, THC is what they call a Schedule 1. 
And Schedule One means, as a veterinarian, it's illegal for us to prescribe that. In the states that have medical marijuana, it's for people. It's for the physicians, the doctors, the, the DOs, and their patients. Not for veterinarians, not for animals. Because technically, or legally, pets are owned by their people. If a person's in a state with medical marijuana where they can get it legally, then they can give it to their pet if it's being done in a, um, in a, in a compassionate and careful fashion. You know, because if you did give marijuana to your pet and had an overdose, it's entirely possible, depending on your community, that you might wind up having animal abuse charges leveled at you. You don't want that. So this is this is for pets who aren't well. This is for pets who really need something extra. Pets that maybe have epilepsy and they're on the drugs, but they're still having seizures. We're not certain that used alone without the anticonvulsant drugs that the marijuana will work. And I think in some cases where it's less severe, it may, or the hemp or the CBD, but I think in many of the more severe cases, we do need to have a little more THC in there than um, what we're seeing with just the hemp itself, or use higher dosages than what we're seeing in many commercial products in the market. This is what I found out. Some states are trying to pass bills to make it legal for vets to prescribe medical marijuana to people's pets. But so far, it's still not legal. However, some dispensaries out there are selling pot treats. And it's becoming more and more popular for vets to recommend it. Even a quick Google search came up with tons of options of CBD for your pets. So I want to leave you with the point that marijuana has a huge place in terms of health care for our pets. Uh, the mar marijuana products, primarily CBD oil, um, can offer huge benefits to our pets. That's for arthritis, pain, inflammation, anxiety disorders, seizure disorders, and cancer. My own experience in using CBD oil for my dog, Lewis, was overwhelmingly positive. No question, I would use it again. I'm going to leave some links in the description box below of, of all the research that I compiled in case you want to look into this yourself. So this is just a little bit of what I found. I hope this helps you guys out there. Have a good day and try to make somebody else smile today. Bye y'all. and these emergency room admissions is to try to educate the public and I felt the best way to do that coming from my position as a veterinary herbalist and a veterinarian practicing in Colorado was to write a book. The title of the book is Medical Marijuana and Your Pet.